Hey, while you in the first five seconds of the video, go ahead, like and subscribe. Verse 24, the Lord shall make the rain of thy land powder and dust. From heaven shall it come down upon thee until thou be destroyed. Go to the next slide. So we see here gold and cobalt mines, Democratic Republic of Congo. There's lots of dust. It's very easy to catch colds and be hurt all over. Read that again. This is uh, Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 24. The Lord shall make the rain of thy land powder and dust. From heaven shall it come down upon thee until thou be destroyed. So all you see, keep, you, you see, it keep repeating the same thing, until thou be destroyed. All these curses came on us until we be destroyed. Today, we don't, uh, many of us don't know, we don't even connect the dots of us being the nation of Israel. We don't even know that Israel is our homeland, or that, that, that's where we from. Next slide. Uh, read that. Verse 25. The Lord shall cause thee to be smitten before thy enemies. Thou shalt go out one way against them and flee seven ways before them mm -hmm. and shall be removed into all the kingdoms of the earth. So it said, Lord shall be called, cause us to be smitten before our enemies. When the nations came against us, we went out one way against them to try to fight, but we lost. And we just, we just, it says, and you shall flee seven ways before them. Showing that we was lost and we was removed into all the kingdoms of the world. Go to the next slide. So this, I know you can't see this, the Catalan Atlas of 1375, going into the Trans-Saharan slave trade. That was before the Transatlantic slave trade when they brought us over here to America, to the Americas. This is what happened. You also had the Trans-Saharan slave trade where the, the uh, Arabians had us in slavery and was moving us around. Uh, you see, go, go ahead. Here, we moved into all the kingdoms of the earth. When, that, when, the, when those slave trades happened, we were removed. Into, we was moved everywhere. That's why everywhere you go, everywhere you go on this earth, we there. No matter where you go, everywhere. The small communities here, we scattered everywhere. And that's why they, they, they try to put the term on us that we're a minority. But when you look at, you, when you... If you if you go if you were to go and just take all of the, the populations of where we at all across the world, we're not the minority. We're the majority. That's why that's why they have to do things to keep us separate. That's why they have to uh, do the various things to make us think a lot of a lot of a lot of us so called blacks uh, have strife with the so called Hispanics, or they have or vice versa. They have strife with us. They do they. Put these things out there to make us think we're different people, but in all in actuality, we are the same people. If we, when we, as we unify, keeping God's commandments, we are a great nation. We, we, we actually, we are the majority on this earth. Next slide. Read verse twenty-six. And thy carcass shall be meat unto all fowls of the air, and unto the beasts of the earth, and no man shall fray them away. Next slide. So here we here is some of the things that happened to our native native Indians. The wounded knee massacre. You see the the uh, you know the Buffalo soldiers and you see the dead bodies piled up or down on the bottom. Next slide. This is more that happened when when the uh, explorers or the, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Conquistadors. Conquistadors came over here. This is what they was doing. They were sending the, the wild, this is going back to the verse we read earlier, sending wild beasts. All of these, see, down on the bottom, these are the natives being attacked by dogs. And you see the, the, the soldiers sitting up there watching on that entertainment. Next slide. Verse 27. 
the Lord will smite thee with the botch of Egypt, and with the emrods, and with the scab, and with the itch, whereof thou canst not be healed. So it says, Lord will smite thee with the botch of Egypt and with the emrods. Emrods are hemorrhoids. Brace yourself if you can't handle certain imagery. Next slide. So hemorrhoids. It can be internal hemorrhoids and external hemorrhoids, whether, whether it's uh, your uh, intestine come out, protrude out because of inflammation. That's a very common thing amongst our people. And it's large in part because of the foods that we eat. Next slide. And then you see the boils on the picture on the uh, right. Verse 28. The Lord shall smite thee with madness and blindness and astonishment of hearts. It says the Lord shall smite thee with madness and blindness and astonishment of heart. That madness is going to us basically going to be up being crazy. And it's, it's crazy because we, there's certain diseases that we may have that we are mentally ill and there's things that happen. We truly we had a lot of trauma that happened through our life, our upbringing, through slavery. All of those things happen because of, this is a, it's a curse of God. It says madness, blindness, and astonishment of heart. Read. And thou shalt grope at noonday, as the blind gropeth in darkness. And thou shalt not prosper in thy ways. And thou shalt only be oppressed and spoiled evermore. And no man shall save thee. So that says, thou shalt grope at noonday, as the blind gropeth in darkness. That grope at that noonday is going to be weak because we know that something's wrong. We know that things ain't right. So we, we, we go search. And to, we, go, we go and search into every religion, we go search to everything, trying to fill that void. But it says, we're going to grow up at noon there, the blind group, we're going to be searching and searching and searching, going to Christianity, going into Islam, going into uh, various religions, going into everything, trying to find that void, to try to fill that void, to try to fill that, that curiosity, Africanism, Pan-Africanism, all, all of those things. It says, and I shall not prosper in thy ways, and I shall be only oppressed and spoiled evermore. There's no solutions. We, have, we find no solutions by going to those things. Next slide. And this is this here on the right. This is going into that, uh, read the, was it 28? 28. Of the madness and blindness. Verse 28. The Lord shall smite thee with madness and blindness and astonishment of heart. Uh, go back to, so this one here, probably can't see it, but it says racism, discrimination, poverty, Violence. All these are stressors on diverse ethnic and racial groups. These are the things that cause us to be mentally ill, mentally crazy. All these things that go on. Mental, mental health disparities factor. Members of ethnic and racial minority groups in the U.S. face a social and economic environment of inequality that includes greater exposure to racism, discrimination, violence, and poverty, all of which take a toll on mental health. So all of those things happen. These are all curses. Next slide. And you see here, you got Emmett Till. We all familiar with that. So you got the Civil Rights Movement with Martin Luther King. You got uh, George Floyd, what happened with him in uh, Minnesota. The Black Lives Matter marches and all of that. This goes into the end of that, the last verse. Read the last part. Okay. And thou shalt grow up at noonday as the blind grope within darkness, mm -hmm. and thou shalt not prosper in thy ways. So in addition to going to various religions, we, we have marches and all that to try to solve all of these problems. But what happened, what did it say? And thou shalt be only oppressed and spoiled evermore. So it says in the, in the midst of all of that, we still gonna be oppressed forevermore, read. And no man shall save thee. And it says no man shall save thee. That's what you see here. Martin Luther King tried to, get us out of the, our conditions, we still here. We still going, it, it's, more, it's more disguised now than it was then, but we still going through the same issues, same problems. Malcolm X, you got Marcus Garvey, uh, Mega Evers, you got so many, so many of our men that raised up to try to get us out of our conditions, but they did, they, it, was, it was all to no avail because they was missing the one key, the, the most important key ingredient. And that's us actually keeping the commandments. Because if we, if all of these things are happening to us because we broke God's commandments, because we didn't apply his rules, what's the solution? The only solution is that we return to what we broke. We have to return to actually doing what he told us to do. 
just like a just like a, a father and son relationship, parents and children. If that child disobey, they get disciplined and they have to correct the behavior. Next slide. Verse verse thirty. Thou shalt be thou shalt be troth a wife. And another man shall lie with her. It says, Thou shalt troth the wife, and another man shall lie with her. You, 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 you troth the wife, you get engaged, and then it says, Another man will lie with her. Read on. Thou shalt build a house, and thou shalt not dwell therein. You, you're saying we're going gonna to build houses. We're going to put all, we're going to build the brick and mortar, the, all of that. We're going to do all the work to build the house, but we're not going to dwell in it. Read. Thou shalt plant a vineyard, and shalt not gather the grapes thereof. We're going to be in the garden. Planting the vineyard, but we're not gonna be the ones that bear the fruit of it. Next slide. This is this is what happened. This is a lot of things that happened in slavery. We had our we had wives, and this is showcasing a lot of the movies, the slave movies that they showed. But we had wives and our wives were taken. So here you got three, three young white men and a black woman. Uh this is picture from 1632. You see that you obviously see that the black woman is fight, trying to fight it off. Every slave movie, you see this being depicted. And then it's, it's, it's in the Bible. So this is, this is our history that happened to us over time, and it correlates directly with the Bible, which shows, shows us that we are the Israelites. We are the, we are the Israelites that the Bible talks of. So the Bible is our history book. It's not a white man's book. It's our history book because it specifically details the things that are going to happen to us if we break God's commandments. Next slide. I mean, even, even to the point of here, we are all, we all familiar with what happened with Will Smith and Jada Pinkett Smith. Verse, that? verse 31. Thy ox shall be slain before thy eyes, and thou shalt not eat thereof. Thy ass shall be violently taken away from before thy face, and shall not be restored unto thee. Thy sheep shall be given unto thy enemies, and thou shalt not have none to rescue them. So go to the next slide. So here, you see here thousands of millions of buffalo cattle being slaughtered and murdered. Next slide. Same thing here. And you see a white, you see a white man standing around uh, proud of what they have done. Next slide. Verse 32. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people, and thy eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long, and there shall be no might, and there shall be no might in thy hand. So it says, Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given to another people. <coughs> that only happened to us. Same thing, you watch this. You watch, you've seen those slave movies, you've seen our children being ripped from us, sold to another slave master, and it was nothing that we could do. All we could do, all, all we could do was moan and groan, cry day in and day out, but couldn't do nothing to get our children back. We had no military might, we had no economic might, we had no no power to go and get our children back. They was taken, sold to another, sold to another slave master in a totally another a total, a whole another state or country, and we never seen them again. Next slide. It says, the mother of these children was beaten, branded, and sold at an auction because she was kind to Union soldiers. Uh, as she left for Richmond, Virginia, February 13, 1864, bound down in a cart, she prayed, Oh God, send the Yankees to take my children away. It's from sale for the benefit of the children. So, and what we read in the Bible, Deuteronomy 28, that's, that's prophecy. And then that, we see here, that prophecy fulfilled. And nowadays, even though we, we call black, we call African-American, we call a name change every, every 10 years, but these curses follow us. That's how, you, that's how we're able to identify who we are. Because a lot, of, a lot of us don't know our history beyond slavery. And the Bible is the, the, the main foundation. That's the beginning point of our history. Uh, the one on the right, it says, we found them. These children were owned by Thomas White of Matthews, Matthew, Matthews County, Virginia, until February 20th when Captain Riley, 6 USCI, took them and gave them to the Society of Friends to educate, to educate at the orphan shelter 
Philadelphia, profits from sale for the benefit of the children. All right, the next. Verse 33, the fruit of thy land and all thy labors shall a nation which thou knowest not eat up, and thou shalt be only oppressed and crushed alway. So it says, the fruit of thy land and all thy labors shall a nation which thou knowest not eat up. I shall be oppressed and crushed always. This going back, this is the same thing we just read in 28. Everything we push in and try, strive towards doing, it gets pushed down. This is not talking about the individual that got this done or the individual that got that done. It's talking about us as a nation. As a whole, this is all this is always what happens. When we like going back to Black Wall Street and what happened in Tulsa, Oklahoma, it wasn't only in Tulsa, Oklahoma. That was everywhere. And it's the we, I know we showed the one the one um, picture with the, the city that was, was once a, a city, of once a black community, now is a lake. It's many of those across the, across the nation. And this is why they were thinking it was happening. Uh, read on. Verse 34. Verse 34. So that shalt, thou shalt be mad for the sight of thine eyes, which thou shalt seek. Going back to said, thou shalt be mad for the sight of thine eyes, which thou shalt see. Going back to that mental illness. That's why a lot of a lot of us have uh, mental trauma from our childhood. That some of us have some of us have mental traumas where we very we have anxiety issues. It's hard for us to get ahead. It's hard for us to do certain things because of the mental trauma that we face as children. We it's been it's various multiple variations. Some a lot of a lot of a lot of our people been molested, all type of things, all of those things that happen contribute to that mental illness that we, that we have. It's, it's uh, what they call it post-traumatic slave syndrome. Right. Next slide. So here you see us on the slave fields, being overseen. We, even though we're picking all, we're doing all the work to, to pick this, we didn't, we, didn't, um, we didn't benefit from it. Even though we was doing all the work, we didn't benefit from these things. Next slide. More images of us. Serving hard bondage. Next slide. Verse 35. The Lord shall smite thee in the knees and in the legs with a sore botch that cannot be healed from the sole of thy foot unto the top of thy head. Mm -hmm. Next slide. So this is diseases. Should have prepared y'all for this. this is, these are the diseases that, all of these diseases that come on us. It's a, it's a direct result of breaking the commandments. Verse 36, the Lord shall bring thee and thy king which thou shalt set over thee unto a nation which neither thou nor thy fathers have known. And there shalt thou serve other gods, wood and stone. When we first came over here off those slave ships, we didn't understand their language. We didn't understand the language that they were speaking. We spoke a totally different language. Same way when they came over here and colonialized America. The Indians didn't speak, they didn't speak the same language. That's that you know that there was a nation that we did that neither a, a nation which neither us nor our fathers have known. And it says, There shalt thou serve other gods, wood and stone. What's the two major religions on the earth today? Christianity. Christianity and Islam. That's what that wood and stone is going into. That wood, go to the next slide. That wood is going into the cross that's displayed. And just about every Christian church in America, you have some churches that actually would have a big cross on certain times of the year and bring it down as a as a sign as a uh, symbol of worship. And that's what it is. That, that's the wood. Next slide. It's more of the wood. It's wood and stone. This is an uh, image of um, white Jesus erected in where, what's, what's, where is this at? Uh, Rio de Janeiro. Rio de Janeiro. Next slide. Verse 37. Then that stone, you know, we didn't have a slide, that stone going into Islam, you have the uh, Kaaba stone that's over in Mecca, where 
the Muslims, they have to go on a, on a hodge and they go over there and walk around the stone, kiss the stone, and actually that's a worship of that stone. That other wooden stone is Christianity and Muslim and uh, Islam. And we know there's a multitude of other religions, but those are the two major ones. Next, let's read that. Uh, verse 37, and thou shalt become an astonishment, a proverb and a byword among all nations, whether the Lord shall lead thee. So it says that you will become an astonishment. Astonishment is basically when the nations, when people see us, see the things that go on in our community, they see how young men dress, they see all of it, that's an astonishment. It's a wonder. Like, why, why are they so low? Why do they dress like that? Why are they always fighting each other? Why are they always killing each other? Why are they destroying each other? That's, a, that's an astonishment. A proverb is a wise saying. A wise saying, uh, black men are lazy. Black men don't take care of their kids. If you want to hide something from a nigga, put it in a book. All of those are wise sayings. And it's sad to say that a lot of them are true to some extent. But the reason that they're true is because we broke God's commandments. It's a curse. And the byword. A byword is us being called out of our God-given name. We are the Israelites, but we call blacks, Hispanics, spicks, niggas, coon, color. We call everything outside of the Israelites, outside of the tribe of Judah, the tribe of Benjamin, the tribe of Levi. We call everything outside of it because a lot of the names, you don't find African-American in the Bible. You can go get your concordance. You, can go, you don't find it in the Bible. You don't find Hispanic in the Bible. You don't find Negro. Well, you find nigga in the Bible, but we were all so we were also called blacks. You're not gonna find none of those things, and let alone you can't go to a map and go find the nation of black. You can't have an African American because those are two men. So we are called those are bywords. Next slide. This is an astonishment. Our young men walking walking the streets with their pants all the way down, I think this is an older picture because now our younger tight. men are wearing tight pants right. and they said, and they going down and say, I don't even know how that's possible. But, and then on the right, you see uh, Cardi B. Cardi B, the music that's out, the music, that's an astonishment. Our, the music that's out there calling each other bees and hoes, uh, glamorizing sex, when sex is supposed to be something that's sacred between a husband and a wife, that's an astonishment. Because you don't see these things with the other nations. These things are only happening amongst the black Hispanic community. Next slide. And we're gonna skip us. 46. 46. Okay. And they shall be upon thee for a sign and for a wonder, and upon thy seed forever. So it says, and they. When you're still in the same chapter, it's time that they is referring to the curses. That they, the curses, shall be upon thee for a sign and for a wonder. That sign, just like if, just like when you came here, if you looked for the sign that say Houston. That's how we know we know we on 90th in Houston or 91st in Houston because the sign that was outside. So these curses, we can identify who the Israelites are by looking who are these curses played as a whole, as a nation. Who, 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 when you look through these curses, where do you look and see these curses at? What communities are they in? They are our community. These curses are upon us for a sign and for a wonder and upon thy seed forever. So as long as the Israelites are breaking God's commandments, you're going to see, if you look at these curses and go through them, you're going to see who the Israelites are. Next slide. Want me to continue reading? Yes, continue on. Verse 47, because thou servest not the Lord thy God with joyfulness, and with gladness of heart for the abundance of all things. And all these things happen because we look at the commandments as a grievous thing. We look at the command, we look at one of the commandments, get Leviticus 21 and 5. It says, because thou servest not the Lord thy God with joyfulness and with gladness of heart for the abundance of all things. Most High God gave us all, everything that we need. He gave us the commandments, but we didn't keep the commandments with joyfulness. We decided to uh, desire what the other nations were doing. What, the, what the, we desired the, the, the glamour and the glory of the other nations not realizing that the Most High God, it says, for the abundance of all things. We had everything we needed. Read. It's the book of Leviticus, chapter 21 and verse 5. 
They shall not make baldness upon their heads, neither shall they shave off the corner of their beard. So this is one of the laws. Very, it's very simple. Men, we're not supposed to shave our head bald, and we're not supposed to shave our beards off. We're supposed to let our beards grow. This is something, and this is one of the easier laws. This is something we're supposed to do with joyfulness and gladness. But today, what we, what a lot of our men, a lot of times we get jobs. They tell us to, you know, you gotta have a. a, a clean shaven face, only got a mustache. Those things are against God's law. Go to Deuteronomy 22 and 5. One more. Yeah, read on. Okay. Nor make any cuttings in their flesh. Nor make any cuttings in our flesh. Going into tattoos. That's something that we are not supposed to do. That's something that we got from the other nations. Go to Deuteronomy 22 and 5. It's the one serving God. We, the only way that we can serve God is by keeping his commandments. That's the most important part of us serving God. It's not, it's not going to, the, to a church on Sunday and dancing and screaming. It's none of that. We serve God by keeping his commandments, and we have to do it with joyfulness and with gladness because they're not hard. They're not a grievous thing. It's what, it's what we need for our soul, our spirit. Read. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 22 and verse 5. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Uh -huh. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment, for all that do so are abomination unto the Lord thy God. So this is another commandment. Read it again from the top. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. So another one of the commandments says, The woman shall not wear that which pertains unto a man. What is it? What is an article of clothing that women wear that, pain, that pertain to men? Pants. Pants. So read that again. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Mm -hmm. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. It says neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. So women are not supposed to wear pants because those are those, those pants are for men. Hence the saying, for, hence the saying we don't hear today. But the saying of who wears the pants in the house. The man is the head of the house. That's evidently known. So if a woman is wearing pants, that's pretty much going into the line, oh, I'm the man. I'm the man of the house. And it's, 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 it's something that's psychological. You may not think that, but that's actually what's going on. That's why, that's why the commandments, that's why the commandments is so. Read it. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Mm -hmm. Neither shall a man put on the woman's garment. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. Women, men shouldn't be wearing dresses and skirts and things of that nature. Read. For all that do so are abomination unto the Lord thy God. And he said those things are abo an abomination to God. These things are disgusting to God. That's cross-dressing. A woman wearing pants and a man wearing dresses, that's cross-dressing. The Most High God doesn't like it. It's disgusting to him. He don't even want to see you. So back to the back to the Hebrew 28, I just wanted to Bring that out in our service, not the Lord thy God with joyfulness and with gladness of heart for the abundance of all things. That's those are two of the and those are easy, those are actually easy commandments. Those are easy things for us to do. Read on. Verse 48. Therefore shall thou serve thy enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee. So now again, now saying, therefore shall thou shalt thou serve thine enemies which the Lord shall send against thee. So this is a clear, this is clear to show us that we broke the commandments, the Most High God is gonna send our enemies against us. How are you gonna send them against us? Read In hunger and hunger. We wanna read it, read all the way through. And in thirst, mm -hmm. and in nakedness, and in one of all things. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. So I want, I'm gonna go to the next slide, but I want y'all to remember that last part that says, and he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. We already seen those yokes of iron, what the yokes of iron was. It was on our neck. But today, we don't have those yokes of iron on our neck no more. We don't have those yokes of iron on our neck no more because we destroyed. We don't know that we're the Israelites. We don't know that we, we, keep, we gotta keep the commandments. Because when we're keeping the commandments, the Most High God got us. He gonna take care of us. He gonna make sure things are right. But now we are we are walking in a destroyed state. We don't know who we are. We're ignorant of what we ignorant that the Bible is our history book, and we ignorant of the fact that we have to keep the commandments. That's right. Go to that next slide. So 
And that last scripture we just read said, Thou shalt serve your enemies in home. That's your snack program, food stamps. We serve in our enemies. Water, you want to get something to drink, you got to go to your enemies. Uh, with the yarn, clothing, you got to go to our enemies to get all these things. Therefore, shall thy serve thy enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee. And hunger. And hunger, that's the snap benefits. And in thirst. And thirst, we want to get some water, we got to go to our enemy. You got a house, you got to pay a water bill to the whatever municipality that you live in. And in nakedness. And nakedness, the clothing that's on our backs. Free. And in want of all things. And one of all things. You want to get married, you got to go to the courthouse to get a marriage, to a marriage license to get married. You have children, you got to go to the, the county clerk to get your birth certificate, your social security number. We have to be serving our enemies in want of all things. As medicine, you, you want to get health care, you got to go to our enemies. Next slide. And wait, wait. Education. And go back, read the last part again. And educate our education. Now read that last part again. And in want of all things. Uh huh. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck. And it says, and he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck read. until he have destroyed thee. Until he have destroyed thee. So it's, the Bible is very specific. It says the Lord gonna send enemies against us, and then it says at the end, and he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck. Who put yokes of iron on that? Y'all say it, ain't it? It's, it's, it's a history. It's, it's facts. It's so called white. It's, it's, uh, the, the, the Bible is speaking. That's right. Next slide. So there were those yokes of iron. The yokes of iron were put on our necks by a so called white man. It's, it's very, the hist history, the, the images, and all of our history don't lie. And it's correlating right with the Bible, letting us know clearly. There's no, there's no refuting this that this happened to us. It's clearly, clearly identifying that we are the Israelites of the Bible. Next slide. Verse 49. The Lord shall bring a nation against thee from far, from the end of the earth, as swift as the eagle flyeth, a nation whose tongue thou shalt not understand. Y'all all y'all have that flyer, right? Because the it says, the Lord shall bring a nation against thee from far, from the end of the earth, as swift as the eagle flyeth, a nation whose tongue thou shalt not understand. Uh, when y'all get this flyer, I want you to open it up and look. Look on the on the bottom of the second page. <clears throat> right on right here. And if I can get somebody to, to name the name the nations that's listed on those coins. The coins that's on the, it's on the, you open it up, it's on the right side at the bottom. Uh, the Greeks, Eagle, the Roman Eagle, the United States Eagle of America. So, you know, we see all of these empires, which were Edomite or so-called white man empires, they use the Eagle as they symbol. Now read that again. The Lord shall bring a nation against thee from far, from the end of the earth, as swift as the eagle flyeth. So it says, the Lord shall bring, it's not, it's not a coincidence that we read in the Bible and it says that this nation came from the end of the earth as swift as the eagle flyeth. It's using that because these nations, all of these nations that came against us, the so-called white nations, they all use the eagle as they uh, emblem. So go on. Next slide. A nation whose tongue thou shalt not understand. He said, then they came up against us. We didn't understand the language that they were speaking. Next. Verse 50. A nation of fierce countenance, uh -huh. which shall not regard the person of the old, nor show favor to the young. So when they came against us, they didn't show, they didn't show no regard for the young or the old. If you, if you, was, if you wasn't with them, you were getting put to death. You were getting... You were getting beat, you were getting burned on the stake. And what did they come with? Like we read in the other verse? Wood and stone. You see the cross. That's what they came with. It's either you, you with us or you die. They had no, no regard for the young or the old. That's what we see in this in here. They had no regard for the young or the old. They're branding, putting their name. That's why we got. 
And what you see going on here, that's why we got the last names, Davis, Johnson, Williams. We are they property. And now we a, a lot of a lot of us, we got the uh Williams the third, or Davis the third, or her name. We got these names and we pass it down proudly to our children. But all we're doing is continuing on with our enemy's name. Yeah. So the picture in the, in the background with the one on the right, you have this 13 bodies of them. That's a that's an image of the 12 apostles. The 12 apostles and the uh, and Christ. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships by the way whereof I spake unto thee. Thou shalt see it no more again, and there ye shall be sold unto your enemies for bondmen and bondwomen, and no man shall buy you. So how do we get over here to America? Ships. And read it again. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt so again. The Lord shall bring you into Egypt again. What is Egypt talking about? My brother, say it loud. Bondage. Bondage. What, what happened? What was happening to the Israelites in Egypt? Bondage. Bondage. Did the, did the, you, are you familiar with the Bible? Very much. So. Did, did the Israelites ever go back to Egypt physically? Huh? We're not, we're not to go back to I'm saying in the, in the records, did we ever go back physically into the land of Egypt? No, not by. No, we did. No, this it, it says the Lord shall bring me into Egypt again. We know right. that in Egypt the Israelites were in slavery. Right. They never went back to Egypt. No, no. In slavery. So what is he talking about? It says he gonna bring us into Egypt again. Get Exodus twenty and two. This is the book of Exodus, chapter 20, and verse 2. I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt. So he delivered us out of Egypt. Out of the house of bondage. He delivered us out of the house of bondage. So in this verse, when he's saying he's going to bring us into Egypt again, he's going to bring us into bondage again. How? Go back to it. With ships. He's going to bring us into bondage again with ships. This is all history. This is how we were stacked. We were stacked on the bottom of the slave ships like sardines, going back into bondage, back into slavery. Next slide. They had us piled up, all type of feces, blood, babies being born, all type, all, everything. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. Brought into Egypt again with ships, so came over here on, to America on slave ships, and also, the native Indians that was here was sent to Europe on slave ships. By the way whereof I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. Meaning we will never see our homeland again. And today, many of us don't even know that our homeland is Israel because we don't know that we are the Israelites. So we'll never see our homeland again. Read. And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies for bond men and bond women. We got off those slave ships. What they do, they sold us for slave men and slave women to various masters across the states. Read. And no man shall buy you. And there's no one that's going to be able to save us out of that condition. Uh -huh. We are gods on earth. Uh -huh. We are gods on earth. Uh -huh. We are gods on earth. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road. Purple and gold from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.